Hello, and welcome to the first episode of How We. I'm Michaela Carr, the executive producer. This episode, we'll be diving into the Psychology Science Accelerator Lab, featuring interviews from Abby Sanders and Justin Parks. We'll be exploring what the Psychology Science Accelerator is, what projects the lab is currently running, and more. Before we dive in, let's start with a game called Concentration. For those who don't know the rules, Concentration is a game for two people. A topic is declared and both players must go back and forth saying words that relate to that topic. If one player says a word that has already been said, says a word that does not fit the topic, or cannot say a word within three seconds, the other person is declared the winner. For example, if I said the topic animal, players could say words like bear, tiger, or cat. To keep track of time and maintain rhythm, players can form a clapping routine. Alternatively, we decided to play without it. Cardinal, canary, parrot, chicken. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Apple. Kiwi. Orange. Apple. Oh. <laughs> Dominoes. Frank's block house. <laughs> Starbucks. La Rosa's. The uh, Vines. Papa John's. Goldberry. Big Beats. McDonald's. Taco Bell. Burger King. <laughs> Wendy's. Subway. O'Brien's. Uh, oh! That was a good match. Now, we'll dive into some Q&A with the Psychology Lab. I'm a senior here at AU. Uh, I am an integrated science education major, which will allow me to teach any science class grades 7 to 12, and I'm a minor in psychology. This is my second year in the lab. Um, I'm a sophomore. I'm majoring in psychology, and I'm minoring in addictions and child and family studies. So this semester in the lab, I'm taking more of an organizational administrative role. So I help to um, build lab agendas so that we stay at least a little bit on topic during the lab. We obviously welcome anybody's ideas and we welcome time to just be silly and have fun, but I try to keep us on topic a little bit. I, I meet with Chris, I see what we need to do to have studies rolling. And I, and I give people gentle reminders to do their work. So I'm a research assistant. Um, basically, I just come in and I conduct studies and I also help with other tasks. PSA 007, uh, which is called SPAML, it stands for Semantic Priming Across Many Languages. Uh, it's actually one that I started, my, I started working on my first semester in the lab. Um, it is one of those international studies, so I am just a very small piece in the larger picture. Uh, but what that's doing is it's looking at how we associate words. So if I were to say dog, you'd be more likely to think of cat than you would of like whiteboard because those, those words are semantically linked, okay? Oh. Um, so we know that that's true in English because we've, there've been a lot of studies in that. But what we're looking at now is collecting data across the world. So we're looking at collecting that data in many languages. So you've English, French, Spanish, German, and that's where that map comes in as well. Because we have studies placed all over the world, we're able to dive into these larger truths um, about what humanity knows. Um, stereotype threat is one. I'm kind of looking at how certain stereotypes um, for different uh, populations would affect performance and anxiety and that sort of thing. It takes a lot of groundwork to get it up and running to where it's ready to go. Um, you have to do ethics training so that we can um, perform these studies on human subjects. There's something called the Human Subjects Review Board uh, at all institutions and all they do is we present our study to them and they read it and they say, okay, sounds like no one will be harmed in this study. We will go forth and, and allow you to, to collect this data. So we have to go through the HSRB process. Um, we have to think about what we're actually studying. Um, so you have to make sure that you're really clear on what hypothesis you're chasing after. 
and you have to be ready for that to be true or false. Um, so you don't want to walk into a study and think, if this comes out that my hypothesis was incorrect, it means I failed. It's like, that's not true. It just yeah. means that you learned more. Going through the logistics of how are we going to collect this? Is it going to be a paper and pencil study? Is it going to be on a computer? Do we need to do coding? So that usually takes a semester to a year um, to just like work out all the logistics. And we work as a team and we divide the work and we make it happen. Mm -hmm. And then we start collecting data. And they'll just walk into the lab. Um, we'll have them sit down at that table over there. And they'll sign a consent form. And when they're done with that, um, walk them over to the laptop. And they sign another electronic consent form. And then after that, they just follow the instructions on the screen. And depending on which study it is, it might take a half hour to an hour long. I hung out here as a high schooler through CCP and through an organization called The Well. And I met a friend there named Savannah, who was a part of the PSA, and she said that she thought that I would be really good for it. So I was given the chance to apply to, to join Chris's lab. Um, I went through an interview process, I applied, the whole nine yards. It was actually orientation weekend my freshman year. Um, we had a faculty uh, department meeting, and so all the incoming um, freshmen for whatever major you were, I was psychology, I met with all the um, professors and um, staff in their department and something that all the professors were talking about was research and each professor in the department has their own little uh, different take on how they do that, how they get students involved in it and um, I was particularly interested in um, what Chris was doing with the Psychological Science Accelerator and so I just emailed him and he emailed me back and um, the next week I was at the lab meeting. So the Psychological Science Accelerator is a worldwide network of psychology labs and uh, the pins behind me actually represent where we have locations. So when I say things like 005, uh, 007, it means that those, all of those PSA studies are being run in multiple labs across the world. Uh, the goal here is not to just get data from a small sample at Ashton University. You know, what does Ashton University know about language? Um, but to really expand and say, what, do, what does the world know about language? How does humanity interact with language? Essentially, the Psychological Science Accelerator was created um, to attack the replication crisis in psychology. So. Um, and this happens in other uh, scientific disciplines as well, but essentially what it is, is um, studies are being published that aren't necessarily replicable. So um, there are many reasons for this. Um, you know, maybe the researcher manipulated the data, had some sort of bias when they were uh, publishing their study. This study will come out in this journal and it's like, oh, this is the new thing right now. But if you go back and try and like replicate what they did and get the same results. Um, that's not always how it works. So essentially the goal of this lab is to take different studies that have already been conducted before and replicate them um, lots of different times over different labs across the country and across the world and um, kind of make sure like we can come to some conclusive evidence that this is actually how things are going. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to keep a lookout for our other upcoming videos. Ask questions, be curious about the lives of those around you, and we'll see